Hey, yo, what's going on, fam? It's your homeboy, OG Camera Boy. We back again, you know what I'm saying? Today, I'm going to be talking about that Nikon Z50 once again. We're going to be exploring the autofocus system. Now, you know, Nikon's autofocus system has definitely been much improved with these Z series of cameras, especially on the video side of things. I mean, their autofocus systems on the photo side of things was always real good, and we're going to explore them both today. We're going to take a look at a bit of that autofocus on the photo side. We're going to look at a bit of the autofocus on the video side. We're going to test the FTZ adapter with the adapted lenses see whether or not the autofocus works well with them too you know what i'm saying even using secondary brands like sigma and whatnot so we're gonna see how well that stacks up you know what i'm saying plus i got a canon so i'm gonna put it up against dual pixel autofocus man which i think is an industry standard at this point in time so we're gonna see whether or not the nikon z50 can hold its weight up against the dual pixel autofocus we're gonna test it in all kind of different lighting situations and we're gonna see whether or not it's worth the buy you know what i'm saying you might be interested in this if if it's something that you looking to buy so let's explore the autofocus systems DNA made from Nikon Z chromosomes homie I guess my secrets out and now you know me okay so really let's just jump right into it I got some video examples of how the autofocus works on the video side and I also tried to take some video of how it works on the photo side you're gonna have to bear with me I'll explain that as you be watching it but anyway so let's just jump straight into it and see what we are working with all right, so to start off, we working with that Canon M100 with the dual pixel autofocus up against the Nikon Z50. Now, I realize the Canon M100 doesn't necessarily represent the cream of the crop as far as Canons go, but yo, it's got dual pixel autofocus. So check out little home. Every time my back is turned, man, he's trying to get at those plants, you know what I'm saying? Get himself a little bit of that salad bar. Anyhow, so we can see right here that the Nikon is actually performing extremely well. Let me give you a little bit of information about the settings that I got it at. I got the tracking speed up at 4 and that's going to be the second fastest and the tracking sensitivity set at 2 and that's the second highest. Now with the Canon I can't control any of that. Maybe you can with some of the more expensive Canons but with this one you cannot. Now there you just saw the Canon autofocus system was tripping for some reason. I have no idea. That's kind of unusual when it comes to dual pixel autofocus. Point is it was tripping. Nikon did not. Now you see I'm trying to turn away from the camera, approach the camera, go out of frame, pop back into frame and give it those types of tests and see how well the Nikon can compete against the dual pixel autofocus because I found the dual pixel autofocus is very reliable. But in this situation I would say that the Nikon is actually performing a little bit better, you know what I'm saying? It's performing a little bit quicker when it comes to focusing. Take a look at this here situation while I come into camera. You know both of them perform very well there, I mean no hunting involved canon did very well nikon did very well both of them extremely fast you know what i'm saying actually in some cases if you really want to scrutinize it i would say the nikon is actually even quicker here with the back of my head and turned around sometimes you would expect the autofocus systems to get a little bit of trip you know what i'm saying when they look at the back of your head will they keep you in focus will they understand that that's the subject matter that you want in focus but yo it's performed extremely well in this situation and this is with the kit lens i should mention so i'm very pleased with the response on the autofocus system when it comes to this situation right here i think it performed admirably and yo it stacks up just fine and in some cases i'd say it was even a little bit better man one last thing i want to mention real quick about that last clip was that i shot the nikon on aperture priority the canon m100 actually doesn't have an aperture priority setting it has some automatic setting but i didn't want to use it anyway so i brought it inside here and now you can see we're looking at it in the low light high contrast situation i want to see how well the autofocus systems would perform in this circumstance and after studying these clips a few times i would say that they performed pretty well actually given the circumstances of how dark it was in the room now I looked at these a few times over and if I'm being honest I think the Canon actually performed a little little bit better. Now both of them like I said seem to be catching focus fairly decently and obviously I think the Nikon is better exposed. You see there's a Nikon tripping a little bit. Obviously when you talk about low light situations like that most autofocus systems are going to struggle and the Nikon in this circumstance is no exception you know I've had certain situations where I was filming out in the evening time and I noticed afterwards looking at that footage that the Nikon was really struggling and like I mentioned once before once in my other videos I did my great conjunction special and I turned on the red light because that's what you use when you do astrophotography and when the light was all red the whole scene was red the Nikon was tripping man that autofocus didn't know what to do with itself but here you can see I mean 
it's not perfect that's for sure i mean look you see it still hasn't caught focus well i think the canon has and nikon is just tripping more in low light situations this type of high contrast circumstance it's not the greatest i mean there's where i think nikon can do a little bit of improvements to the out of focus system and canon seems to be performing better in this situation though not perfect and here's a, a little crossover i wanted to show you how the box was tracking me on the Canon. Now we're going to take a look at the Nikon afterwards, but for now you can see that the box on the Canon does a decent job. I mean, it loses me now and then. As far as being close to the camera, close to the lens, it seems to catch and latch on to me real quick, you know what I'm saying? And keep it in focus. And, but you see, it's strange because here I don't have the box around my face, but if you take a look at the footage on the right, I'm actually in focus. So the Canon does pretty well in the dark, I have to say. I mean, I think it did better than the Nikon, if I'm being honest, but just marginally, you know what I mean? It wasn't the greatest performance, but it was half decent. And here we see the Nikon, by contrast, you know what I'm saying, with the box around my face. It seems to hold me pretty well, even when I go hiding behind my other camera there. And then I pop my head back out, it catches me right away, you know what I'm saying? So it seems to do a decent job as far as like catching my face with the yellow box, you know what I mean? And tracking me and all that. It actually tracks me further back when I move further back than the Canon did, I find. And actually in this situation, for some strange reason, the Nikon seems to be performing admirably. Like way better than some of the other tests. But the point was is that it was kind of inconsistent there. You could see it kind of hunting a bit, but that's because I'm hiding behind the camera. Once it catches my box on my face, it's usually pretty good, you know what I'm saying? But here we see, you know, it's just that high contrast or that very dark situation it's always a trip for the nikon autofocus systems that's somewhere if they wanted to improve i guess they could try and do that in the firmware update i don't know if we're gonna see anything like that but that would be nice because the low light performance is mm, in some cases less than stellar and at best inconsistent okay so rather than a high contrast situation what i wanted to do was bring the nikon out and this is actually just around first light the sun hadn't come up yet so it was kind of dark outside and i wanted to be able to have the whole scene set to the same type of light and rather than a high contrast situation and see how well or how poorly the autofocus system would perform under these circumstances this obviously is the nikon z50 we're still on the kit lens in this circumstance and we're going to test it out a little bit jumping in and out of screen moving back and forward and you know see here's a situation where it was a little slow to kind of focus on me but you know you make your own judgments i thought it performed okay but that's about the best i could say you see how it didn't catch me in focus there so it's a bit iffy man now back to that high contrast situation you can see here you know what i'm saying we're looking at the ftz adapter with the sigma 17 to 50 on the f 2.8 so you know again it's tripping a little bit but i mean it's not terrible you know what i'm saying in this situation it seems to be catching me for the most part even when i'm bobbing and weaving a little bit like that it doesn't lose me too badly it actually doesn't lose me at all in most cases from what i'm seeing so you know, it's doing real well, I think, of catching my face and keeping me in focus as I move forward and backward into the camera, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, this FTZ adapter, I have to say, this is one thing that I'm extremely pleased with when it comes to the uh, Nikon Z system. And I think you can infer that this probably works just as well with all of them, the Z6, the Z7, or whatever. And of course, this is a non-native lens being a Sigma and everything like that. But, you know, it, even with the Sigma, in my experience, and I don't have too many non-native lenses, if I'm honest, but this Sigma, I think, will give me a good idea to see how well those third-party brands really adapt with the FTZ adapter. And, you know, for the most part, I think it's working pretty well, given the circumstances of a difficult lighting situation right here and how high contrast it is. Now, I don't know, maybe the contrast is actually helping this somewhat. In some cases, trying to find me as a subject, but... You know, given that circumstance of it being dark in the room, that's pretty decent performance for the Sigma as far as I'm concerned. Now you're looking at the 35mm f1.8, and I have it at 1.8. Just to keep in mind, I've actually kept all these lenses wide open, so the widest apertures that they can go is what I've been using. So when it's the Sigma, it's 2.8. When it's this 35mm, it's 1.8, and whatever further on, I'll describe what the aperture is that I'm using at that point in time. But I always kept it wide open. So you can see that the f1.8 in this here high contrast situation, I mean, at the beginning it was bugging a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I find it's half decent. I mean, when you look at it in this here high contrast situation, I pop out of screen and I pop back into screen here in a moment and boom, man, it catches me real quick, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty impressive as far as I'm concerned. But again, I don't know if the high contrast situation is helping it, but here you can see it's bugging again, man. 
you know i popped in closer to the camera and it seemed to have a difficult time trying to catch me finally does right there but once it does it seems to hold on decently i mean obviously when i pop out of frame and i pop back into frame it seems to trip it a little bit you know what i'm saying so here you can see it's very slow to react and i guess that was kind of less than impressive but you know we're gonna see the uh, 35 millimeter f18 in different situations and i have to say it performs much differently but in this low light high contrast situation it kind of performed a bit whack if i'm being honest so it wasn't great it wasn't that consistent you know what i'm saying okay so again we at f1.8 this is still the 35 millimeter on the ftz adapter and this is around first light like i said the sun hasn't risen yet so it's quite dark outside it looks a little bit brighter this footage than did the last because the last obviously was the kit lens at f3.5 this is going to be the 35 millimeter at f1.8 and here you can see it's kind of bugging again, you know what I'm saying? So that low light performance, once I get close to the camera, it seems to trip, you know what I'm saying? When I stand further away, it seems to catch me okay, but when I'm close in on the camera, like, it's struggling, man. That autofocus is really, well, there, you know, that was, it's, it's unpredictable is what the situation is, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it catches you, but a lot of times it doesn't, and that's the problem with it when you have something that's inconsistent that means it's going to be unreliable you know what i'm saying when it comes to like low light performance so as far as the marks that i can give it for low light performance the 35 millimeter and the kit lens didn't seem to perform super great but here we're looking at ideal lighting situation you know the light is up sun is up everything's well lit again it's at f1.8 this is the 35 millimeter we wide open so you can see that here in this situation it performs extremely well you know it's kind of snappy there you go catches me right away but you know sometimes it does a little bit of that focus breathing thing you know what i'm saying where it goes past and then comes at you you know what I'm saying and finally gets you in focus but you know it's not exorbitant or anything like that it's have decent it's okay and passable but you know, to tell you the truth, the talking headshots of this video, I filmed with the 35 millimeter f1.8 and it held me in focus perfectly. So if the lighting conditions are really good and your subject matter is well lit, then I think you're going to have a very good performance out of this 35 millimeter f1.8 and the FTZ adapter. So as long as the situation that you kind of filming yourself is well lit, you're going to be OK. But as soon as it goes dark, everything starts to trip with the autofocus system in this lens and FTZ adapter. Here's a kind of interesting one. I have a 50 millimeter f1.4 Nikon lens that I popped on there with the FTZ adapter. I wanted to see how well that would perform. And you know, it was okay, I think is the best that I could put it. I think of all the lenses that I owned that I tried with the FTZ adapter and the autofocus system, this one performed the worst. And there were some situations like, look right here. I mean, that's slow, man. That's really slow. And then what, boom, I pop back in and yo I, I just look like a shadow or something you know what i'm saying i'm so out of focus you can't even tell what i am of course i'm tripping over the table not looking at what i'm doing but anyways look how long it takes man come on now focus finally i got so frustrated with it that eventually i just ended up coming close to the screen and trying to press the focus point so that it would catch me and there you see me with tremendous disappointment in my face because this was just no good because like i said man the lighting conditions outside were just fine it's the middle of the day you know what i mean you got the sun up light is ideal so if i'm being honest i mean the performance was terrible with this lens it really was it struggled to focus on the background struggled to focus on me and it was just very very poor performance so here's a real bright spot as far as an adapted lens this is my favorite lens i've mentioned that before this is the 12 to 24 f4 this lens is sharp 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 i just love this nikon 12 to 24 it's an older lens and as far as performance goes for an adapted lens it was fantastic man i mean look how quickly it just catches me every single time i pop into screen boom it's got me man it's just this lens is just so fantastic you know what i'm saying I, everything about it and i was so happy that it performed so well because i could see myself using this lens with this ftz adapter on this nikon z50 a lot now i know it's not the greatest for vlogging if you watch my vlogging video you'll know that i complained about it just from the perspective of it being heavy but cast that aside for one second if you just ignore the weight this is your ideal vlogging lens you know what i'm saying i know it doesn't have vibration reduction either that's kind of another thing that is a bit of a bugaboo but the electronic work just fine you know what i'm saying but i just love how well this performed on this ftc adapter so if you have this lens you in luck
All right, and now we're back on that Sigma 17 to 50, obviously at 2.8. And like I was saying, I always left it wide open. So just to reiterate, on the 12 to 24, I was at F4. So this is at F28. And, you know, I think it's pretty snappy, you know what I'm saying? The one thing about this lens is that it does have a very loud focus mode. So you can hear it clicking and clacking the whole time. But, you know, if you cast that point aside too, then you could say to yourself, well, it's actually performing very well. I think it holds me very well when I move back and forth, when I bob around like a fool and all that kind of thing. By the way, you're going to see a little jump in the tape. There it was. Boom, that jump. The reason I did that jump is because my cat jumped out in front of me when I tried that the first time. So I had to go back and do it again. It almost killed me, sent me over the edge, you know what I'm saying? But so I guess the performance on this signal was pretty good. I mean, ideal lighting situations. If only that focus mode was a little quieter. So that concludes my testing of the video autofocus with the kit lens and adapter lenses. What I wanted to take a look at now was that animal eye autofocus. Now that was something that Nikon put up in the firmware last year. I think it was in October or something like that. So now this camera does have eye autofocus. Now what you're looking at, and I know it's a bit of a sort of stuttering kind of footage, and that's because I was doing a screen recording of my uh, phone connected to the camera through SnapRidge. So it wasn't like the most perfect example of steady footage or anything like that but it does give you an idea of what you'd be seeing through the evf or on the back of the screen if you were using animal eye detect autofocus now here i'm using my little homie kitty smiles you know what i'm saying he's going to be my little stand-in model and just try and ignore the fact that it's going in and out of focus with SnapRidge. you know it's just one of those things i don't really use SnapRidge very often so i don't know exactly how it works as far as like even with the autofocus on continuous autofocus or anything like that obviously if i was holding the camera in hand and recording it through the evf or something i could just keep the shutter half depressed and you'd be able to see everything in focus all the time but in this situation i'm kind of manually focusing it but the point is you want to be watching how the box around the eye jumps around, you know what I'm saying, or how well it catches or how it doesn't catch very well. Now, I found the animal autofocus to be iffy at best. Now, if you have a slow moving subject or if you have a subject like my little homie here who's just laying down, whatever, and has a high contrast sort of eye to fur color like my little buddy does because his eyes are obviously glowing yellow green kind of thing, chartreuse almost. And he's a black cat, so you know that contrast is very high. But you can see where the box always kind of like bobs around. It can't really make a decision on what eye to focus on. And oftentimes it's not necessarily focused on the center of the eye, it kind of focuses in the corner or it goes to his forehead or the tip of his nose or something. It's just it's not the greatest. I think it needs a little bit of work if I'm honest, but you can get some decent pictures with it if you're patient. Now here's an example of a picture that I took, and you're gonna see some examples here. Now, if we zoom in, we can see that. It does a pretty decent job of catching the eye focus and i was pleased with it and here's my 12 to 24 if we zoom in again we're gonna see that this one is extremely sharp i mean look at all the detail in the eyes it just looks beautiful you know what i'm saying and of course here's another one that you're looking at we zoom in on the eyes you're gonna see how beautiful the detail is and you know he was obviously a very still subject for me to shoot there so the eye focus had no trouble catching them now I shot this image here with my D7500 and I wanted to compare whether or not I'd be able to achieve as good a success of focusing on the eye by moving the box in the focus area myself. So here we could take a look at the comparison between the last image that I showed you in my D7500 and honestly I could tell you that I think the eye autofocus on the Z50 did a much better job of me just choosing the focus point. So you tell me what you think of that. Now we jump from animal eye autofocus to the human eye autofocus and again I'm recording this off of SnapBridge doing a screenshot of that so please keep in mind that there is going to be a little bit of stutter in video and like I said I don't know how to do it through SnapBridge or if it can even be done that you can kind of keep the consistency of the continuous autofocus working obviously if I was doing that handheld by depressing the shutter halfway I'd be able to do that so just ignore the blurry image but you can see that I'm bobbing and weaving here and by the way I'm using the kit lens here in this situation first so you can see that the eye autofocus is tracking me half decent and you know sometimes it lags behind it's not the greatest i do think that the eye autofocus system on the nikons do need improvement but in general they're not too bad i mean they can kind of hold you in focus and like i said before in another video i do wish that the eye autofocus worked for video but it really doesn't so now switching over this is my 35 millimeter you could see on the screen it says f1.8 like i said before i always kept them wide open i have it on aperture priority 
And you can see that with me moving around very quickly, the autofocus does sort of lag behind a little bit. I mean, I have seen some video and examples of like Sony's autofocus system, and I would say that the Nikon really needs to sort of put in some work in order to catch up to what Sony's doing as far as autofocus is concerned. It does, you know, if I move to the left, I move to the right, I bob around, it, it, it does lag behind me. You can see that there, it was on my forehead, on my cheek, it's all over the place a little bit. But you know what's funny, I put my glasses on because those are trans transitions and they're a little bit darker so i thought that might throw it off a little bit but actually it still caught my eye but you know again needs improvement okay so we can see now that definitely the nikon z50 and the autofocus systems when it relates to video is much improved there's no question about that i mean if any of y'all out there might have had some sort of the older dslr cameras whether it's the da50 or the d7500 like i have or the d500 or whatever from video side of things uh, they just didn't cut it as far as the autofocus was concerned they were always hunting it just the systems on those cameras were no good that's just plain and simple I have had a tremendous amount of success recording those cameras with manual focus, just using these two hands here to dial it in, you know what I'm saying? And that worked real well because the picture on those cameras is just beautiful. There's no question about that, man. So if you're willing to manual focus, you can get by just fine with the DSLRs if that's something that you're still holding on to. But you know, if you were getting into that situation where you're gonna be filming yourself and maybe having more dynamic circumstances, then you're gonna want an autofocus that just can dial it in. So yo, you tell me, man. I mean, I think obviously the reason that I bought the Z50 is because I know that that autofocus system is much improved. Does it still have some wrinkles to be ironed out? Yeah, no doubt about it. I think it does, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're talking about the performance and the low light or whatever, but in some situations, if you're talking about ideal circumstances of vlogging during the day, for example, walking around and all that, yo, the autofocus worked just fine in my opinion. So, you know, it's quick, it's responsive. They've come a long way, there's no question about it. And you know how this goes, man. They could always improve it in firmware updates and things like that. So, yo, what y'all think about that, man? Comment down below, let me know what y'all think. I got more testing coming soon, you know what I'm saying? We got other things that we gonna wanna take a look at when it comes to the Nikon Z50. So keep tuned for that, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, I hope y'all are doing well out there and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.